Today on Tipping Point, I'm talking about the mark of the beast and what it is, what, what it means, and the role of the false prophet in the mark of the beast. I'm talking about the new government in Israel and a new prime minister, very significant for the politics of Israel moving forward. There's also a civil war going on in the Democratic Party in America right now over the nation of Israel. I'm going to talk about that. Answering questions, is a generation 120 years long, according to Genesis chapter 6? Very important question. Will racism get worse as we go more into the end times? I have a very specific answer for that according to the scriptures. And is the marriage supper of the Lamb seven years long? And if so, why? Welcome to Tipping Point. I'm Jimmy Evans. Welcome to Tipping Point. Uh, I'm going to get right into the teaching here in just a second about the mark of the beast being revealed. I want to talk one more time about the 21-day journey we have on XO Now, which is our streaming platform. We have hundreds of resources on there to bless you and help you. But we have 21-day innerhealingjourney.com and 21-day total freedom journey. And both of those are on XO Now. And you can subscribe to XO Now. It's $9 a month. You can go to 21dayjourney.com forward slash tipping point. And if you uh, enter the promo code tipping point, you get 25% off your first month on XO Now. Now, we were just in Colorado this weekend for an XO conference, a marriage conference, and they have declared a state of emergency in Colorado because of the number of young people they have that are harming themselves, depressed, suicidal. Literally, the hospitals are full. Their hospitals there. The governor has declared an emergency because of the numbers of inpatient care and outpatient that they're having specifically with young people. This is affecting the mental health of our entire nation right now. If this is something that you're going through or a loved one is going through, I really do believe it would bless you to go through the 21 day journeys and they're both on XO now, 21 day journey.com forward slash uh, tipping point. And you can subscribe, get 25% off. Um, the Mark of the Beast, in the last program, I talked about 10 facts about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a major figure uh, in the Bible. And so I want to talk again a little bit about the Antichrist, but I want to talk about the false prophet, and I want to talk about the Mark of the Beast, specifically what is the Mark of the Beast. And it comes from Revelation chapter 13. It's going to talk about now the false prophet, then it's going to talk about the Mark of the Beast. This is verse 8. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs. So he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs with which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lip. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So let me talk about the false prophet, first of all, because it's, when it says, I saw another beast rising up, and he spoke, uh, he looked like a lamb, had the horns of a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. This is the false prophet. Now, he appears as a religious leader, a harmless man of peace, but he literally speaks for the devil. Okay, remember, the Antichrist is Satan incarnate. So this is probably a religious figure who comes, and literally he's the worship leader of the Antichrist. He comes and causes all the world uh, to worship the Antichrist. Now, some people believe this is the Pope. Uh, some people teach very adamantly that the Pope will be the false prophet. I, I don't teach that because I just don't know. Um, I don't know who it is. But it will be a worldwide religious figure 
that will lend his credibility to the Antichrist and cause the world to worship him. Uh, he deceives the whole world into worshiping the Antichrist, and he uses as part of his, uh, his case for the Antichrist that he was miraculously healed from a deadly wound. This is what we're told in Revelation. He was, he was resurrected, just like Jesus. They will pretend that the Antichrist was killed, assassinated, whatever, and then he had this miraculous resurrection, which will lend credibility. He has the supernatural authority in the presence of the Antichrist to do miraculous signs and wonders to prove the deity of the Antichrist. So it's in the presence of the Antichrist. I believe the Antichrist probably doesn't want the false prophet doing those miracles outside of his presence because he wants everyone to know it's about him. It's not about the false prophet. He leads the world to make an image of the beast that speaks and causes anyone who won't worship it to be put to death. You say, well, what is it? I don't know. Is it in Jerusalem? Is it in New York City? I don't know. Is it in Rome? I don't know. Is it a hologram? You know, because hologram technology now is very, uh, very uh, much here technologically. Is it where there's a hologram, he's speaking, he's, you know, and the world worships it? I, I don't know. All I do know is there will be an image and the punishment if you don't worship that image is you will be killed. Now the devil wants to be worshiped. In Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, we're told that Lucifer wanted to take God's place in heaven. He went from being the worship leader in heaven to trying to overthrow God. And so he wants to be worshiped. This will be his hour in the world where he won't ask you to worship him the way Jesus does. He'll demand it, and if you don't, you'll get killed. And here's the fifth fact about the false prophet. He causes the entire world to receive the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. It is him who does this. He's the one who imposes this mark of the beast on people. Well, the, I'm going to talk about what, what the mark of the beast is. Well, the, the word mark in the Greek language is the Greek word karagma. And it, li it literally means to engrave an impression, a mark cut in or stamped on. This is like a tattoo. This, this is like an, an impression where it, this, this is in your skin. This is something that will be very present uh, in your skin, your right hand or your forehead. Some people say, well, why is there right hand or forehead? Because some people don't have a right hand or some people's right hand is not functional. And so if you don't have a right hand, you don't want it on your right hand, you can put it on the forehead. Either way, without the mark of the beast, you will not be able to transact business, which will be horrific not only are they threatening to kill you if you don't worship the image of the beast, uh, but also if you don't take the mark, they're going to kill you. If you don't worship the Antichrist, they're going to kill you. So right now, for the first time in history, we have all the technology necessarily, necessary worldwide for there to be a control, a financial control of the whole world. Now, I've taught for many years that the cashless society is, you know, we're going to have a cashless society at some point. And I still believe that's true. The cashless society makes it much easier to control the economies of the world. But you know, honestly, today, it doesn't matter. The, they have the technology to where you couldn't even use cash if you wanted to, if, if you don't have the mark of the beast. And so we have the technology worldwide to be able to impose this right now. This is in the middle of the tribulation. So if the tribulation started tomorrow, there's still going to be a few years for them to gather the technology and the influence uh, to be able to impose this on the whole world. But again, it's the false prophet who does it. And we have the, RFI, the RFID chip, the VeriChip technology. The VeriChip is like a grain of rice that they put between your thumb and your index finger right here. Uh, animals have this in them. Products have this, this kind of technology in them. This is very common today. Uh, vaccine passports, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of the vaccine passports, um, but they are like a tattoo. Uh, health here, and some people have this actually on their hand where you can't go, you can't travel if you don't have this vaccine passport. Now, a lot of people have asked about uh, Amazon Pay by Palm, and the Amazon Pay by Palm, th this absolutely, totally is a forerunner of the mark of the beast, where you just walk up, they associate your palm print with a credit card, and you just wave your palm over it, and you get out. But imagine just a minute that you had to also swear to a certain uh, moral code or lack of moral code before you could transact. And I'll talk about that more in just a minute. That's what the mark of the beast is. 
And then the last one here is universal product code. I, I know that you've seen this on all the things that you buy at the grocery store, maybe something that you haven't seen. Each one of these bars has a numerical equivalent to it. And if you'll notice right here, this number six is two bars. These two bars right here, this is the number six right here. Six, six, six. The products that we buy at the store, pull some beans out of the pantry, pull something out that has the UPC code on there. All of them have six, six, and six. You say, well, is that the mark of the beast? No, it's not the mark of the beast, but I think all of these things are just precursors to getting us comfortable with the fact that, you know, uh, we're going to have to use some type of technology that's associated with these things to be able to buy and sell. And the vaccine passports now, this, this is a, this is a wake up call for everyone. They're trying to force people to get the vaccine. And I, I don't want to get into all of the politics of the vaccine. I have not taken the vaccine. I don't plan to take the vaccine. And I certainly don't want someone to try to force me to take the vaccine because that won't work. I won't do it. And so you see people, a lot of Americans, I think 40 to 45% of Americans right now are saying they will not take the vaccine. But imagine just for just a minute that you can't travel, that you can't go to your work, uh, that you can't, a, a hospital has tried to impose this upon their employees and many of their employees walked out. Imagine for just a minute, that you couldn't go to the grocery store unless you could prove that you had the vaccine, those types of things. This is what's coming on steroids. The mark of the beast is an absolute control mechanism. Let me talk about three facts about the mark of the beast. The first is it is a mark of submission to and recognition of the Antichrist as Lord. This, the reason that this is so wrong and dangerous is you literally are worshiping the Antichrist. This is Revelation 20. I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. There are people that are going to be beheaded during the tribulation. This is not you. Now, if you're a believer, you're not going to be there. But for Unbelievers who become believers, they accept Christ during the tribulation, and they're told you must worship this image of the Antichrist, and you must take this mark. And they say, no, they're going to get killed. M many of those people, if not all of them, are going to get killed. It's picturing them here. They wouldn't worship him, and taking the mark is a part of worshiping the Antichrist. You are recognizing him as deity. And by the way, this is what the Antichrist is trying to do, or the false prophet is trying to do. He's trying to get the whole world to recognize the Antichrist as God. And this image calling down fire from heaven, this image that moves, the fact that he was resurrected from a deadly wound, all of that is supposed to give credibility to the fact that he's God. Number two fact about the mark of the beast, it is a repudiation of Jesus and the Bible and it's an unforgivable sin, okay? So when you take the mark, you're not just saying the Antichrist is God, you're repudiating Jesus and the Bible, Revelation 14. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or in his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. So it's saying here, if you take, th this is not going to be something where you just accidentally get the mark. Or it's like carrying a credit card that has a chip in it or something. It's not that at all. When you take the mark, you know exactly what you're doing. You are swearing allegiance to the Antichrist. You are declaring that he is God and you are rejecting Jesus. Remember, it's Antichrist. He's completely against everything that Jesus is for. He is the total opposite. If you took a picture of Jesus, the negative of that picture is the Antichrist. He's the opposite. So that's what you're swearing to, and the Bible says it's the unforgivable sin. If you take the mark, you are going to be tormented forever. Here's number three. It is the basis of the wrath of God being poured out during the tribulation upon all those who take it. Now, this is Revelation 16. Now, this is 
horrific. These are the bowl judgments. There are the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, the final judgments are the bowl judgments, and they're the most severe, and they're universal, Revelation 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Well, the word foul, it says they had a foul and loathsome sore. Okay, now the, remember, this is going to last for years. This is around the middle of the tribulation where this happens. These are the final judgments. So it says foul. The word foul means severe and malignant. It can't be cured. A very severe, malignant uh, sore. Loathsome means painful, evil, and malicious. This is something that is incredibly painful. And the word sore means ulcer. It's an open, an ulcerated wound, an open wound. These people are going to have open sores on their body that are going to be unbelievably painful and malignant. It'll either kill them or they'll have to live in this pain until they die or until uh, the second coming. And how do they respond? You say, well, God pours out these bowls. How do people respond to these bowls? Revelation 16. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. When you see the just the all-out rebellion in the world today, this is a precursor of what's going to happen in the tribulation. In the midst of all the judgments, you would think, and there will be people who repent. I mean, there'll be people who receive Christ during the tribulation. Most of them will be martyred. If they don't, they're going to live through hell on earth. But listen, would you rather be killed by the Antichrist, or would you rather have these sores on your body, these malignant, terribly painful, open wounds on your body for years, and then go to hell. And so there, there really aren't any good choices during the tribulation, but the better choice by far, obviously, is to choose Jesus and to be martyred for, uh, by the Antichrist and to live forever and ever in the presence of Jesus. It's just going to be a horrible time. Again, I want to say, you're not going to be there if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, I'm saying you need to open your heart and receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. You need, you need Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you'll be saved. And so if you'll just say, Jesus, I confess you as Lord of my life and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was resurrected for the dead. He'll come into your heart and you'll be saved. And what that means is you'll live in heaven for all of eternity and you won't be here during the tribulation. Jesus is coming to rapture the church. It could happen anytime. He's coming to rapture the church. We're going to be at a wedding for seven years. It's called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. And there will be seven years of hell on earth called the wrath of the Lamb. And so one way or the other, you're going to encounter Jesus for seven years. And my prayer is that you're ready and that you'll be at the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. It's going to be the most glorious thing in the world. And in spite of all the things that are happening in the world today, I'm telling you, we have something incredible to look forward to that's going to happen just any day. We're going to be in the presence of Jesus for all of eternity, and we are going to rule and reign with him. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you're not a subscriber, I'm going to say goodbye to you right now, but I wish you'd become a subscriber. You get the first month for free. Endtimes.com. Go there. Sign up. Your first month is free. If you don't want to continue after the first month, you don't have to continue. But you can see as a subscriber the full podcast. You can also see all of our archives on there, all the articles and all the things, all of the tipping point programs before this. And so, and if after the first month you don't want to continue, that's fine. But it's $7 a month, $77 a year. I think it's a, a great bargain to get this information, this encouragement, and to be equipped to live in the times we're living in for $7 a month, $77 a year. And so, encourage you. If you're not